Mike Gisretel, a name that has become synonymous with being able to educate the masses, but never actually show up for your own self. I might be a little bit sorry about that. That came out harsh, but it is a little bit true. And uh, someone who gets lost in their own psychosis, turns out if you're fairly autistic on camera, you might be fairly autistic off of camera too. Sorry, that was also rude. We're just gonna move on. He came out with several interviews since his most recent debut at his show with lots of statements about why he didn't do so well, about why he hates bodybuilding, about why he's going to quit and then also about why he's going to keep going and then also about why he's going to quit again and he thinks it's stupid and a whole lot more and i will tell you guys why i'm uh leaving the competitive bodybuilding scene for a little while I work a ton in my burdening my life there's a lot a lot of cost but the upside is potentially really cool it just has to be a lot of cost paid consistently to have a high probability of that upside. I'm switching gears for a very logically compelling reason. I don't like it, but I have to do it. But in this most recent interview that got clipped, he talks about a really important factor that I actually agree with and I think is worth talking about right now to you guys. It is one of the things that I specialize in, anabolic steroids and all that. And I try to make sure that I can educate you guys, not just on what steroids do and their benefits, but also a lot on the drawbacks. Because trust me, for most people, there is more drawbacks than there is benefits. Mike was formerly a professor of exercise and sports science in the School of Public Health at Temple University in Philadelphia, where he taught several courses, including nutrition for public health, advanced sports nutrition, and exercise and nutrition of behavior. He has worked as a fitness consultant on sports nutrition to the U.S. Olympic training site in Johnson City, Tennessee, and has been an invited speaker in numerous scientific and performance health conferences around the world. He's also synonymous with what most people know as Renaissance periodization, in which he is a co-founder of that company. Originally from Moscow, Russia, Mike himself became a competitive bodybuilder and a Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappler, artist, whatever, I don't know what you want to call it. I do Muay Thai, I don't do in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'll be honest. But he has some pretty hot takes on his past steroid usage. We have shown him on this channel before, as well as Greg Doucette has covered him many different times in his shows, his bodybuilding shows. His bodybuilding career hasn't been very lustrous. It's been quite lackluster, if anything. And from someone who talks at the highest level about health and fitness and tries to guide people through the path of exercise, science, and evidence-based bodybuilding, he really doesn't seem to pull it all together himself. And so he has got a lot of criticism. And from that criticism, of course, has deranged a little bit more of himself. You mentioned from personal experience, being aware of the dark side of anabolic use. What is that? <laughs> How long do you have anxiety like you would not believe? Every day that I'm on high doses, I wake up in the morning afraid of the rest of my day. Intrusive thoughts. Mm -hmm. I think about violence all the time. Well, if your testosterone is 25 times what it's supposed to be, what the hell do you think it's going to make you think about? Another one is a marked proximate reduction of IQ. Like right now, as I talk to you, I'm on contest prep. I'm on a considerable dose of anabolics. I'm not as smart right now, and I can feel it. It's this fog, an inability to perceive a broad spectrum of positive human emotion. I live in a really beautiful area in Michigan, and I walk out, and there's this pond and these trees, and I know that I like looking at them, but it's a memory to me. I go work out every morning and I look at the pond and the trees and I'm like, I'm like all I feel is rage and frustration and anger and anxiety. That's my daily. And then as people become deranged online, of course, that garners more criticism. So let's listen to an interview where he speaks about his problems with steroid use on a very well-renowned podcast. I think you're going to love this one. And I'm going to give a little bit of my own insight here. And mm -hmm. what is the impact? So say if you weren't taking steroids, how different would you look? I know this because I used to not take steroids. And when I wasn't taking steroids, I uh, weighed about, at, at a body fat similar to this, uh, I would have to weigh probably 180 to 190 pounds, more like 180 and, and this kind of body fat level. 
I currently weigh uh, 216 pounds because I'm on a moderate amount of steroids a few weeks ago. How different would you look? What about steroids? They're great. What? Am I allowed to say that? What What, what, what are steroids? And you said you take steroids. Mm -hmm. um, do you take steroids all the time? And mm -hmm. what is the impact? So say if you weren't taking steroids, how different would you look? I know this because I used to not take steroids. And when I wasn't taking steroids, I uh, weighed about, at, at a body fat similar to this, uh, I would have to weigh probably a, 180 to 190 pounds, more like 180 and, and this kind of body fat level. I currently weigh uh, 216 pounds because I'm on a moderate amount of steroids a few weeks ago. Actually, earlier last week, I was on higher amounts of steroids and with the same level of body fat, I weighed 227 pounds. So we're talking about 30, 40 pounds of muscle tissue difference between steroids and not steroids. Have you got pictures before and after? Before when you didn't use steroids and you trained and then after? Uh, yes. Okay, so, I mean, just looking at this and I know my big ass fucking head is right in the way. Or sorry, I'm not allowed to swear. My big ass, my big head is in a way, but I mean, not that big of a difference. Not that big of a difference from someone who's been on for several years and has been doing this for several years. I mean, of course, as I always speak about, there's a lot of genetic proclivity when it comes to success in bodybuilding. So maybe he just doesn't have the genetics, but I'm actually pretty shocked that we're not seeing a better overall physique here um, after years of use and tr training. Maybe these are not accurate depictions of the progress he's made, or maybe he really isn't that impressive, um, I hate to say. You know, it's it's a very big possibility. As someone who coaches a lot of people, there is people out there who just simply do not match up with the genetic pool of individuals who are at the highest level of bodybuilding. Just for individual questions. Sure, sure, sure. You said they're great. I was kidding. Oh, right, they're great for putting on muscle if you want to jettison your long-term health and longevity to some extent, yes. And your current psychological stuff. Yeah. If someone that's never done it, give me a window into what you do. You inject it somewhere? You can take steroids orally through pills yeah. or you can inject it into muscle. Okay. So uh, usually you would inject it into your quads. A lot of people do their shoulders and some people, if they're flexible enough, do their glutes. And how quickly do you notice a difference? How big is the, the difference? Just to give me sort of like your... As far as jackness is concerned? Yeah, so if I start taking steroids now, yeah. how, how long would it be before I notice a difference and how extreme would the difference be in your opinion? Visually, after a few months, you would be like, oh, wow, okay, this is some other shit. After a week or two, you'd be like, I don't, I don't know. It's, my workouts feel pretty good. Uh, psychologically, if you're especially introspective and perceptive and you're sensitive to the psychological side effects, which I'm greatly sensitive to, um, I notice in 30 minutes of taking steroids. And would I, if I did the same exact workout but took steroids, would I get different results? Or would I have to ramp up the workout that I'm doing to see those different results? Both. Okay. If you have the same workout and you take plenty of steroids, you can literally double your muscle gain from that workout. If you understand that steroids also allow you to recover faster and better and more completely. You can take your workout and magnify it more set, et cetera, more sessions per week. Uh -huh. And then you would grow like two and a half times as much muscle. Sounds exciting, but there's always a downside for these things. In life, the, there are a few downsides, yes. What are the downsides that no one's talking about? That no one's talking about. So there's cosmetic downsides. You get an increase in body hair growth. This is especially profound if you're female, but if you're a male, that's a thing. I have hair that grows on my ears. I have hair that grows on the outside of my nose. I have to shave the front of my nose. Now, a lot of that's just me being a Russian Jew and hair just grows out of our eyeballs, but shit happens. You get pimples, you get stuff like that. Over the longer term, you get a substantially increased risk of heart disease. If you're smart, you take blood pressure drugs to counteract the blood pressure increase. If you're dumb, you take it on the chin and you have a high probability, much higher of kidney failure later in your life and losing your limbs and your vision and all that good stuff that comes with that. There is an increased probability or severity of cancer. Uh, steroids increase the probability of damn near every disease, kind of central systemic disease that you can have. But that usually happens much later. And so while you're on them, you deal with the cosmetic side effects, uh, increased probability of balding, uh, and the psychological side effects, which are highly unpleasant I can get into in a bit. If you're a teenager, there's an entire class of steroids that close your growth plates early. So if you're under the age of definitely 22 as a male and you take steroids, there's a very good chance you will never reach the adult height you were supposed to reach if you just let nature do the thing. So when teenagers take steroids, it is almost always categorized a super, super terrible idea. Also, they're not intelligent enough uh, yet. Some teenagers are very smart. They're not wise enough yet to be able to make that trade off appropriately. Okay, so a lot to decompartmentalize there. And a lot of it I agree with. I think that he's absolutely right about the long-term effects of blood pressure, heart rates, kidney dysfunction, liver dysfunction, cognitive dysfunction, cardiac dysfunction. All of these things are very real, very big components of what I talk about on this channel very regularly. It is a horrible idea to get on steroids without a long-term depiction of what you want to get out of them, without having the cost to benefit ratio worked out in your mind or even on paper, man, it's not really a fight worth fighting. But the thing that I think is most important in which he mentioned that I do agree with is the psychological effects of, of any kind of anabolic hormone, whether that is testosterone, a DHT derivative, a 19 or testosterone, any of the different anabolic agents that we do have, they all implement themselves in some capacity with our cognitive function. May that be, you know, mood disorders or anxiety, panic disorders, sleeping disorders. There's a lot of things that haven't really been founded yet because we just don't have an experimental body of people to test that I believe are realistic problems just from coaching hundreds of people who use this stuff. There are clear indications that there is some long-term cognitive disassociations created from using anabolic steroids. And you would think that is true because your hormone system is functionally how your brain also operates. It's not just in isolation. Your endocrine system effectively treats and uh, moves and, and modulates all of the organs of our body. And if you alter that hormonal system, you're going to 
fuck some shit up. And before I even continue on, um, one really big part that he talked about was there's a whole class of drugs that can stop your growth as a young individual. And he's not actually right there. Uh, there isn't a whole class of drugs. Rather, it's just an excessive amount of estradiol that can really ruin your growth plate closure. If you have issues in which your estradiol is overexpressed as a youth, you will certainly close growth plates a lot faster than if you were to have reduced estradiol or estrogen. So yes, there's drugs, including anabolics that can stop growth. But if used appropriately, which I don't really think there is an appropriate time to use them, you would certainly not stop your growth. There's not a class of drugs that stops growth. It's just the fact that estrogen might get too high. Um, the psychological side effects are a lot of times the things that are the approximately most displeasing part of taking steroids. Some people like them. But they're, they're also mixed back. Tell me about the, before we get onto the psychological effects, what about libido? Because I've heard all kinds of things. I've heard it shrinks your balls, your, your willy. Something like half of all people will ex experience testicular shrinkage while using steroids. Your boy got lucky. My shit's all the same size. A lot of people, roughly half will experience a decrease in ejaculate volume and a profound decrease in fertility. That does not mean you're not infertile. I know many people, I know many people's children that were fathered when the people were on steroids. So if some people are like, ah, I'm on gear. I can just bang away and nothing happens. Like, that's not true. Uh, steroids have never been shown to uh, change the size of your willy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no mechanism by which really they can do that. Um, so that's not a problem. But steroids, depending on the steroids you take, depending on your own individual biology, depending on the ancillary drugs that you take along with it, uh, steroids can either have no real effect on your libido, have a profoundly upregulating effect on libido, or like hunger, like you would not believe. And for other people, you get um, an increase in libido, but some steroids, for example, decadurabolin in some people, it's a type of steroid, radically it escalates your libido. You turn it just as hungry. And at the same time, gives you in many cases, dependable um, uh, inability to uh, sustain an erection. So erectile dysfunction risk goes up a lot. That's a real big problem because like you want it, but it's not around. It's not around for the picking there. So there's all that kind of stuff plays plays a huge role. And a lot of the other side effects are increases in anxiety, increases in aggression, um, increases in uh, disagreeableness and uh, probability of confrontation. Steroids have been shown decently well. This isn't super confirmed to at least approximately while you're taking them substantially reduce your fluid intelligence. And uh, they may in the long term reduce your overall intelligence. But it seems that if you stop taking them, you get most, if not all, of that back. But maybe not all of it. So they do make you dumber as a, as a general heuristic. That's probably true. Man, so a lot of good stuff, but also a lot of stuff to, again, decompartmentalize. So yes, steroids in a certain capacity will decrease your intelligence. My thought here is that they don't do this through a sort of direct mechanism outside of neurodegeneration, which is a real thing due to oxidative stress and such. But it is more actually that you increase your look, you, you start to become more, more reactive and less long term thinking. And so you start to think about things as an immediate desire as opposed to a long term calculation. And so I don't think necessarily people become more stupid or I actually just think that they become less thoughtful. And when they become uh, more stabilized in terms of just coming off cycle, they do find that intelligence of long term thinking and calculating um, more easy to reconcile with. And when you're on steroids, you just simply lose the capacity or a lot of people lose the capacity. I don't think everybody does. There's a lot of intelligent people who use steroids a lot that I know of, but they also are taking care of themselves in a capacity that I don't think a lot of other steroid users are. The other thing about the willy growth I also wanted to mention, um, you can get your willy to grow and it just depends on DHT molecules, what is in your body and how you use it. Look, if you increase growth mechanisms in myonuclei or muscle cells, you just have to consider that your wee wee is also a muscle. It doesn't take much logic to assume that if you can hypertrophy your bicep using anabolic steroids, growth hormone, insulin, and then these other assortment of things, if you could hypertrophy your bicep, you can definitely hypertrophy other muscles too. Just have to figure out how to work them out, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Which ones have you suffered with the most? Decrease in fluid intelligence, for sure. Radical increases in anxiety, radical increases in aggression. Um, I pride myself on never losing my cool. I've never screamed at anyone. I've never gotten physical with anyone, but the ideas in my head that tell me to do things tell me to do unspeakable things. Like what? They're unspeakable. I have to speak them. You really want to know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm also fucking weird, so just remember that. No, I will Most weird. people uh, probably don't have this severity, but I'll read a comment on social media directed at me, I guess, about me. Um, and it's from like, you know, nameless, faceless profile. And I begin to fantasize about what it would be like and how much sublime pleasure I would receive in uh, hurting that person at a deep physical and emotional level. Uh, badly hurting them in such a way that they're never going to walk right again and they're always going to remember me and how they dared to cross me. Do you know what honor culture is? No. Like the idea that like in the hood, you step on someone's like a gang member's Nikes and he just blasts you away and goes yeah. to jail for 20 years. Like, over what? Steroids. The honor culture comes from maleness. It comes from testosterone. And other brain structures, of course, but the more testosterone and steroids are all testosterone-like molecules. If you have 10 times the testosterone-like action affecting your brain, your proclivity to falling into honor culture-like behavioral patterns and thought patterns increases to an enormous extent. You tend to take things that are not meant in any poor way as affronts. If they're actually meant as affronts, you tend to catastrophize them in your head. And like, this is the thing. Like, I'll be brushing my teeth in the morning and 
shower and like thinking about people in my life that have wronged me. I've never been wronged in a real serious way. And I'll just be like those motherfuckers of uncontrollable fantasies of rage and aggression and righteous anger and revenge. I hate that. Like as a philosophical minded person, I just want to hug everyone in the world. Right now I'm in not so high levels of steroids. I'm just saying I make jokes with every all star conversation with random people in the street, no problem. And so when these thoughts consistently enter my mind on higher doses, I'm just like, oh, why? And I'm never like, I should be feeling like this. I'm like, this is really annoying and really terrible. Okay. So um, I think that was actually more of a depiction into Mike's psychological health because of course there is, and I love the way he put it, this honor culture, right? That it, it does start to precipitate in a sense that you do develop a, an extreme awareness of what other people are doing around you and you do become slightly more off putting towards people who are not necessarily in line with your culture. And, and you see this in the gym, right? If you see some guy roiding in the corner and his skin's purple, uh, you can likely look at him and he'll give you like a fucking mean look and he's just get mad at you for no reason. You're like, what the fuck, dude? Like that's, that's kind of weird. But if you go talk to the guy, he's generally a nice and thoughtful person and has more considerate things to say than just a mean smug look. I think that what you see more often than not is a sort of transient form of whatever he's talking about. To have it at such a degree that he's having it where you actually contemplate these things throughout the day. I personally don't, I've, I've never experienced this on any form of anabolic snore, any dose of anabolics. I will say I have impending thoughts that sort of sit with me and, and mulch and, and ferment in my brain that aren't necessarily favorable, but they're not to the extent of wishing to hurt people or humiliate people and, and have them sort of recognize my presence for the rest of their life due to some horrible actions that I committed to them. I don't think that's too. I think stratifying what happens to you versus another person is really critical. And I think what we're seeing here is, again, some of Mike's own tendencies overbearing his thoughtfulness about what steroids do to the human mind. Physiological and psychological implications, which, you know, you said it basically increases your chances with all of the major diseases from cardi cardiovascular diseases to cancers to um, other diseases. But then also there's this ongoing psychological consequence of taking steroids. What's the point? <laughs> That's a good question. Recently, I've taken a probably several year backseat away from competitive bodybuilding. And, and uh, dude, I think that's a great question. What's the point? And I ask this so much uh, immediately when I get calls with people who want to work with me as a coach or people who are interested in doing things and just consulting me for my advice. I always ask that, like, why are we here? W what's the point? And the amount of times it's stunning, really, that people don't actually have an answer. It's more of just an innate desire. It's crazy. The point should be that there is some immediate and long term award that you're going to get from doing something such as taking a course of anabolic steroids that supersedes just the immediacy of getting jacked. It supersedes just your own selfish desires to develop a physique that look okay by most people's standards. It should be something that is very solidified. I have clients who have goals that are laid out back planned already to go to the Olympia and they haven't even won their first national show yet. That kind of mentality where you know exactly what you're going to do. And it's just like going and getting an MBA at college. Like you know that your career is going to be in business. And so you're enveloping and developing a lot of time with the business scene in school and paying a lot of money to do that. It's not because you're going to go to business school and then decide that you're not going to do business in the future. It's because that you're very well sure that this is something you're going to do for the rest of your life. And you know how you're going to financially create an income. You know how you're going to develop your relationships, your friends, you know where geographically speaking you're going to be. These kind of concepts and thoughts are things that people don't often consider when doing this stuff. But I would say that the reason why would be if you have all of these answers, if you have a wherewithal of the point behind it all. And unfortunately, I just don't think many people do. Because I have a lot of really good things going on in my life and I'm going to need my brain and my um, more fluid civility to deal with them best uh, and for a couple of other reasons. So right now is an interesting time to ask me why I do it because I'm kind of like winding that down big time. Mm -hmm. But um, the real reason is uh, one of the reasons that I started steroids is I was drug free for a long time and I was starting to become kind of an educator in fitness and a promulgator of opinion. And a lot of the people who are in the industry at the time, this is not as true anymore. Now drug free bodybuilding and fitness is exploding, which is a beautiful, wonderful thing. But back when uh, Nick and I came up to be relevant in the fitness industry, you sort of had to be like super, super jacked, super, super lean. It's nothing we were going to accomplish drug free. So we were like, oh, so this is where the road leads to being taken seriously as a, a, a thinker in the space. Let's do it. Nothing is, um, I really like being, or at least for a long time, liked being enormous and ripped. Why? And um, just like a, like, you ever see how a four year old looks at like a garbage truck or a tank or an airplane? Like just that way. It's as simple as that. Biology. And I'm at the extreme end of masculinity brain wise to begin with. And so you ever see a movie where like the Hulk rips off an airplane wing and throws it? Some people be like, whoa. Some people are like, ugh, I hate this movie. And some people are like, oh my God, I want to just be that, <laughs> that whole thing. Why? I want that. It just feels good. But do you know why? Because have you got any hypothesis as to why, why you versus someone else? Because the average person doesn't have that feeling. Mm -hmm. So have you, have you been able to figure out in hindsight why you were so taken by being big? <laughs> I have a few ideas. I'll, I'll, I'll caveat this idea with the following. Um, a retrospective analysis of why you do things is almost always grotesquely flawed. Most of why we do things is a combination of variables we don't understand and genetics. And so like the whole life story arc, well, it all started when a t-shirt in the third grade, like that's bullshit. That's a backward justification you made up. So the following statements are 
backwards justifications I'm making up as just tentative, very not, not sure hypotheses. Um, here's a fun story. This will be fun. Um, when I was uh, small, uh, young, my dad would wrestle with me a lot and um, he would always uh, let me win in the end. He's great. He's a great person. And he would always tell me that I was strong. And, and then uh, in like uh, end of elementary school, all the way through the beginning of high school, I was bullied. Honestly, like literally a few times, I think I was just the wrong person to bully because that very temporary state of disenfranchisement and powerlessness, um, I'm never going to be bullied again, uh, to, put, to put it simply. I wish I was logical enough that when, like if, if I was getting robbed by someone at knife point, or not even knife point, just like just a guy, try to be like, hey man, get out of my way. No, I said get out of my way. I'm going to die here before I move out of your way. You're going to treat me with respect or one of us is either going to jail or the morgue or the hospital. Mm. It's a terrible thing. I think it's stupid beyond belief. Just be like, sir, my apologies. Please keep going. What were you bullied for? Nothing, nothing. Just kid just wanted to believe. But what do you understand the constant of what was going through your brain at the time? Like what you were thinking in that moment? Because I think we can all think back to, well, too, unfortunately, too many people can think back to a time when they were bullied in some way, whether it was a day or whether it was something that was a bit more prolonged, you know, when it became, and they started to, it started to embody that sort of pain and shame and that feeling of I'm different from these other kids. Well, some of my best friends have talked, you know, they've been to therapy and their therapists have, I think, figured out through some of that retrospective analysis, which obviously a lot of the time isn't accurate, mm. that much of their adult behavior today correlates back to an early experience in such a way where they were made to feel a certain way in that social environment where we're so sort of formative. Yeah. How did it make you feel? I felt scared and I felt like I um, wasn't brave enough to stand up for myself. Mm. Later, I began standing up for myself, and that felt very nice. But it felt like I was out of control, and a part of my brain that I didn't consent to made me frown and dipped my head down for me. It was almost like musculature in my neck just deactivated. It, it's an ancestral uh, mechanism that everyone has. Uh, kids all the way up through teenage and adulthood sort themselves, male children, into dominance hierarchies. It's just the dominance hierarchy sorting itself. And someone confronted me, and I automatically sorted myself beneath them. I felt beneath someone. I felt weaker, more inferior, less apt, less capable, less confident, less strong. And I didn't even have consent to it. It's not something I chose. I was like, well, this kid will beat me up, but I better not. It was totally a, a, a subconscious behavior. And looking back on it, I did not enjoy how that made me feel. Damn, that last part, that was real, where he started to ask why many times in a row. And uh, another thing I can think that is, is highly relatable for a lot of bodybuilders. I think there is a chink that is developed in our armor, and it is usually happens at a younger age or somewhere in mid-teens that needs filling. And we can fill that by building more armor that is supposedly our muscle tissue. And I think this is actually a lot of the problems that we tend to experience. At least the people who stay with bodybuilding the longest, even if they aren't successful, are the kind of people that have a a little bit of their screws on loose or loose from just life and the shit that happens in life. To be real transparent with you guys, I was, uh, I had a really shitty, like really shitty childhood, right? I was, uh, my, my mother was a alcoholic, a highly physically abusive, mentally abusive, uh, did horrible things to me, horrible shit that I'd never want anyone to even think about. And I was removed from the home from child protective services when I was 13 years old, put into group homes, then uh, adopted by my aunt, then emancipated into my own own living situation uh, at the time I was 17 and lived on my own ever since then until I joined the military because I felt like I needed something to do and uh, from there obviously a lot of more trauma happened as well and it's just kind of been the whole summarization of my 20s where it was just one trauma after the next trauma after the next trauma and thankfully I'm you know reaching the other side of that now as I've developed a business and a career and all these nice things for myself but the first bit of it was really tough and the solution that made sense to me was bodybuilding because it was consistency. It was a routine. It was almost assured. I could assume that as long as I progress along this specific blueprint and path that's been laid out in front of me, I'll have results. And that was something that felt like it was insurance to me. And then from there, I could push forward even further. So it was a solid standing point and a great step off point, whereas I've never had something like that before. And so for me, it was just an obvious graduation into natural body, winning my natural body building to winning my natural bodybuilding pro card to then progressing into the NPC and so on and so forth. And here we are now. Um, and I think it's kind of the the hallmark of a bodybuilder is to have some kind of story like this. And I do believe that it's a lot of the reasons that bodybuilders do decide to use steroids and do decide to do this for so long as they do. Um, but I think Mike, you know, a lot of people have criticized him for being in this sort of psychosis and hypercritical of bodybuilding, but he is not really that critical of bodybuilding. He's just saying things that he has gone through. And in through that mechanism, what he's gone through isn't necessarily relatable by everyone. And so they think he is speaking for them. And I don't think that is the case at all. He's rather just explaining his experience and then walking you through it. And people don't necessarily love his experience. And so criticize him. I would actually argue that most people are going to have experiences like Mike Isertel, where they were mediocre bodybuilders at best, had lots of side effects, didn't really enjoy their process. Yes, made maybe a career out of it, but at the end of the day, don't really willingly enjoy a lot of what they've done. If you like this, 
this video, like, comment, and subscribe. It does help me get pushed into the algorithm. And when I get pushed into the algorithm, it does me so much good. YouTube doesn't really recognize channels unless they get constant increasing uh, subscribers, apparently. I don't know. This is just what some YouTube guru told me. And it really does help. It does. And it's cost free to you. And it helps me tremendously. Keep making these videos and you can keep consuming, consuming, consuming. Also, 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 if you are a subscriber, I want to give you a big fat hug, but I unfortunately can't. So I'll just make a kissy face and then after the kissy face you can make a kissy face too and it's almost like we can kiss each other in a non-homosexual platonic kind of way ready one two three